for this painting, um, I didn't want to use any masking because I want to keep everything really soft. Um, and then the trade-off is possibly losing a few little details. And this is, I don't know, that needs some more work. I don't know. It's just hard to get these little hairs. But it looks so much fresher if you don't use masking. It's just more challenging. You have to keep the area wet and make sure um, no part dries out. You can see right here where my paint kind of my paper kind of dried out before I was done and it didn't get up into these little edges so I'll just go over that again and then I can go in after that and just kind of scrub 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 and soften um, so we'll see this is kind of a new approach I'm taking with getting all the little flyaway furries on the edges usually I'll mask them out but it just ends up looking so um, stiff when I do it that way so I don't know I'm just trying something a little bit different with this painting but um, anyway right now I'm gonna go in and just um, I, I have my very first layer um, on this dog and now I'm just gonna go in to the darkest areas I kind of work backwards most um, like how to uh, for beginners whatever advice is with watercolor you start with the lightest areas and then work to the darker you can do that but sometimes I think it looks good to put the darkest areas in and then you wash over that whole area with water and it kind of softens it so really you um, you can go either way you can break those rules y'all especially when you kind of figure out your style and things like that so um, so I'm just going to work on this area and block it in, kind of. I thought that that area was a little too yellow, so I ended up adding some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to the mix to uh, kind of cool it down and make it less yellow. And here I'm going in and just adding dark areas, kind of just to act as a map for uh, where the little currents of fur will go. Really, painting fur is kind of like painting water because there's currents of color in it. And there's tiny little strands, but there's also larger clumps of fur that are all kind of in the same color family or tonal family. And um, here I'm just blocking in the eyes. An important part to remember with the eyes is make sure you get your darks really dark working on the nose, getting the whole thing wet so I can then drop in some color, see how it kind of spreads out. And uh, I just wanted to keep it really soft. You use a lot of more water. And then uh, for the texture in his nose, I kind of worked wet and dry with a, a wet, thin wash in my paintbrush. And then the paper was dry and that kind of gave me that nubbly texture you see on dogs' noses. So um, the, the nose is kind of like the eyes. It's kind of a painting all in and of itself. And I'm just putting in smaller little wispy details of the fur. I was using my fur brush there. And just putting in some more detail in the shadow areas. And uh, I'm using my rigger right there to get even the finer little details of individual furs or smaller wisps of fur and um, a lot of times of course fur clumps together so you want to keep that in mind and not think in terms of painting one hair at a time more like uh, one clump at a time and uh, here I'm working on the background I used my own mix of green and Windsor green gold and uh, probably some ultramarine blue and some red, some naphthol red to desaturate the green because I don't want this green to scream. I want it to be really soft and just melt into the background and support the dog. So I was working wet and wet and I, it was a, a somewhat tedious process here because I had to wet in between each little wisp of fur and then drop in the paint and then I had to um, keep each area wet enough so that it would all kind of meld together and the paper would dry really fast so I had to keep re-wetting the area around the hairs just to keep it really soft so uh, it's a bit tricky and you really have to work fast 
Here I'm putting in more currents of color. You can see how I was putting in blocks of color there for the fur. And getting the whole face wet to keep it really soft before I put in these little shading details to contour the face. And uh, I use mostly burnt sienna, ultramarine blue to cool it off and desaturate it a little bit. A little bit of naphthol to um, make it a little bit redder for this golden retriever. If I use too much yellow uh, color, then um, he just came out too bright, sunshiny yellow. So I just had to really mix my colors quite a bit to get the right shade for this golden retriever. Just putting in a few more details around the nose here and I'm working more dry on dry to get the smaller details. When you're working on larger details, you work more wet and wet usually to keep everything nice and soft, especially on a dog. You want their fur to be really soft, so water is your friend. Um, and you can put in these little details with a rigger with color on your brush and then go back in with just water on your brush and no paint and kind of run it through the wisps and soften it up that way after you have the paint on the paper. I do that a lot. I'll put, I'll work kind of wet on dry paper and then uh, go back in with clear water on my brush and drag it um, over different parts of the fur to kind of soften, soften parts of the edges of the wisps that I painted. And here, um, again, I didn't use mask, so I'm having to work with a very small um, zero size paintbrush to paint around all the little eyelashes. Um, here I, was, I wasn't happy with the ears, so I used an oil painting brush, and you can see I'm using a paper towel to scrub, 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 then blot, scrub, 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 then blot to kind of work out those details. Okay, so this is a print of the final painting, and uh, I had to get the painting to the people who commissioned it, so I decided to print this out so I could just give you guys some final thoughts. As you can see, this is a little bit more developed than the last clip in the video, and when I am completing a painting, it's just a really nitpicky process and very tedious and um, there's not a lot to see because it's just little tiny fixes, but I thought that I would just kind of go over what I did. And what I did, as you can see, is these areas are more developed, so I darkened kind of the medium shade tones, and I'll give you a little close-up of the eyes. I developed the eyes some and did a little bit more detail, and I put the little white speck in the eye and to do that I, I use this so um, that worked really well for the little glint in the eye there so I added that see the other little glint and this would work well I think for whiskers too I didn't use well I did use a little bit right here you can see the little white whiskers that I did. And I just developed the muzzle a little bit more and developed those medium to dark tones. I just kind of filled them in. I did a bunch more on this ear because it just wasn't looking right. It needed more detail in this area. So I went ahead and developed that. But pretty much everything else you guys saw in my final video. The next painting that I'm going to be videoing, in fact, I've already got a lot of video done, is this picture. And um, this is another commission. And um, <laughs> I'm actually, you guys look at this, I'm doing two because you guys told me that you wanted to um, see a video of how I attached my subject to the background. And I had already done too much on this one to show you what I wanted to demonstrate. So you guys look, I did a second painting just for you guys. 
and um, this video that I'm going to be doing next is going to show you all about how I started the painting because someone requested that. So this is kind of a rougher painting, but um, it was done for the purpose of showing you guys how I start a painting, how I do the first layers, how I do the masking, how I do the very first um, washes of color, and also how I keep part I keep parts of the animal soft to kind of meld in with the background. And uh, those are all things that you guys have been asking me to do. So my next video is going to be all about that. So my Patreon subscribers will be able to get um, detailed uh, videos of how I did each of those aspects of this next painting. And then of course for all my YouTubers, I'll have a sped up version of this painting from start to finish. So be looking out for those. They should be coming out in about a week. Okay, thanks so much, you guys.